Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. Please forgive the mess on my desk. I am frantic with some orders right now, so everything is just kind of jumbled. Um, I wanted to show you guys a quick peek at this holster that I just finished. Um, this one is for a Smith & Wesson MNP Shield 2.0 9mm and it's got a TLR 8A from Streamlight attached to it. So, light bearing holsters. This is still something that I'm fairly new at, but I think I'm getting the hang of it. Um, I've done a few recently and they came out really nice. Um, this one, I'm happy with, um, but man, it was a struggle. I, I really kind of botched the process part way through and uh, have just kind of been fighting to recover it since. So, um, what you're looking at is intended to be worn as a four o'clock position holster. I don't necessarily build them all that different between something like a four o'clock and an appendix. It all depends on the overall setup that's being asked for. This, I do believe, could function well as an appendix holster or at a four or five o'clock uh, position. So, it's really up to the user. Um, one thing that I think is really important though about this. <sighs> Excuse me guys, sorry about that. One thing that I think is really important is that you can actually tilt this belt clip. It's not quite moving to the full extent that it can. Um, but you can see obviously that you've got some ride height adjustment. You can see a second set of slots in below. So it's basically, it's, it's uh, here let me give you a quick sketch here I basically cut four slots in a shape like that so that you could span anywhere from this until you can go even further by taking this out and going to the next slot altogether. Um, so it does work like that, but ideally I think it'll stay more or less upright or in parallel slots with a slight cant. So you do have some options there. Um, this is my own design, my own um, concealment claw. If you look, I do make them stand up higher than what is typical for any of the manufactured claws. What this does is it aggressively pushes the handle of your firearm in towards your body so that you get less printing on the t-shirt. It does an amazing job. That is what I carry every day. I have my own claw on it. And the biggest difference between what I'm making for a claw and what you're seeing in manufactured claws, I've been wearing this one for a couple months now and it is still perfectly straight. Every manufactured claw that I have personally worn within a couple days is starting to bend. So that's a huge problem for me. Um, just not, I'm not okay with that. So I make my own now because they're much stronger and more effective because I'm able to bend them up taller than a typical one goes. Um, so you do have the option obviously of just removing it if you end up finding out that you just don't like it. Um, that's totally possible. So it's not for everybody, but I think it's for most. So yeah, you can see here I've done some uh, blocking by creating basically custom cutting. Uh, let's see if I can find them. I know they're over here somewhere. Ah yes. Basically just custom cutting some pieces of aluminum that would fit over the firearm in these critical areas. So like right here to cover the mag release and slide release. Uh, not the mag release, sorry, the, uh, the safety and the, and the slide release, putting that on there, as well as another piece down here that functions as a blocking so that the light can escape from the holster. So it's really important, if you're going to make a light bearing holster, you have to put some kind of blocking between the light and the back of the holster so that it can actually pass through. Essentially, predetermining the size of the holster so that the kydex does not form into any of the areas that it shouldn't. Um, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know for sure that molding props and preparation, uh, prepping the blue gun, prepping the firearm, prepping the knife, whatever it is, 
is a key component to how I make all of my sheets, holsters, all that good stuff. So I value that process. I think it's the most important step in the entire process of building a sheath or a holster. Um, so the one thing about this is that these are the retention screws. You can adjust the retention by tightening or loosening those screws. Um, the one thing is when you do an IWB holster, it might feel like it's a bit loose when you're just holding it in hand. You can feel some rattle, some play. However, when you put this thing on, it's going to compress just a little bit. It's going to squeeze the tip of the holster and it's going to start to eliminate that, that rattle and that play. So in this particular case, when it pinches here at the muzzle, that's when it typically gets rid of all that play in there. So it's hard to, to demonstrate by just, you know, gripping it, but essentially that's how it works. And tightening these screws much more than they're at right now is going to make it really difficult to draw. Loosening them is going to make it uh, so that there may be a rattle in it even while you're wearing it. But where it's at right now, the draw is very comfortable and reholstering, you can feel a good positive click. So this is where I like it. Um, I think that's about all I have to show you on this. There's not too much to talk about. Let's give you a good look at it. There's some really nice crisp lines, good definition, adjustable ride height, adjustable cant, adjustable retention. Let me know what you guys think down below. I am, like I said, I, can, I still consider myself to be a little bit of a beginner with light bearing holsters. I know what they're supposed to perform like, so I'm never going to put out a holster that doesn't perform well. Um, so that part's good. You're still going to get, in my opinion, a world class product, regardless of how new I am at a given thing. I will work at it until it's good to go. Um, but I'd still love your opinions down below. Um, comment, let me know how does this compare to, to some of the other, some of the bigger names and holsters that you see doing light bearing stuff. Um, for those of you guys who actually carry a light bearing holster, how does it compare to your rig? What are you carrying? Um, what do you have for a firearm and a light and what kind of holster do you have? Um, I'm definitely just looking for some critical feedback. Don't be shy about it. I don't mind you telling me something's wrong with this. I know this performs fine going to function great for the customer so I'm happy I'm content to let this go out of the shop but I'm always looking for ways to improve so guys if you have any comments critical feedback anything like that even if it's positive encouragement whatever you got comment down below let me know what you think of this let me know what you think of the M&P 2.0 this is the four inch compact version um, there are quite a few variations of this particular firearm and this this uh, product line I guess you'd call it and then uh, who out here is carrying a TLR and which model do you have? Why do you carry it? You know, how's the stack up against your dream light? All that good stuff. I just want to get some conversations going down below. Um, I don't personally carry a light on my firearm. It's not really my cup of tea, so I'm not that well educated on it. It's just not a subject that really has interested me all that much. So uh, let's get some comments going. Let's educate one another and let's... Uh, yeah, drum up all that conversation. So, all right, guys, I'm rambling. You know what it is. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you for sticking around. And, of course, tune in for the next one. God bless.